Sir, I don't, um, I don't know of another, I know of very few changes in here at all that are going to impact the citizens like that with one change, and that's not something we're driving, it's been handed to us. That's a big deal. Though. Yes, sir. And I don't see yes, it is. even changing their meeting date in the moment. It would just split the difference. I mean, the citizens would still have to wait. It would just mean our application deadline would be have to, wouldn't have to be as far back, but the citizens would still have to wait that time. Yes, sir. And I, I, I can't tell you. I don't. I don't know the example, y'all. I don't know where. I don't know where someone went off the track to say. You know, someone in the legislature say this is how it will all be handled. But it's something that we're we're going to have to deal with because we don't want to be outside of that procedure law. That just opens us up too much to liability. So, theoretically, if everybody applies the law, then this would be applicable to all cases all across the state. Yes, sir. So not rezoning cases. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, not rezoning cases, sir. Just cases on the Board of Appeals agenda. Just those cases alone. We anticipate um, you know, our rezoning deadline is pretty tight. You know, we're probably within about five days about where we should be, but this variance one is going to push it. It's just going to push it way back. Um, I had a question in regards to chickens and so forth. Uh, realizing, I guess, it was House Bill 1150, the Freedom of Reform Act last year, uh, that was pushed by you by our, our uh, local delegation. Um, would, what we're considering now, uh, would that, that make them, uh, I guess, grandfather in, uh, those who already have, say, the rooster? More chickens. Yes, sir. I am not familiar with that house bill. Um, we, will, we will certainly look at that to make sure we're not setting ourselves up. But we have been implementing the current, pretty much the the policy that we've been implemented from the county manager. We've been doing that for well, I, I thought closer to two years. Mm -hmm. um, so we will. I will definitely look at that, sir. I wasn't familiar with house bill. Yeah, it was uh, last year. I remember uh, Senator Rush good to speak to it. Okay. Go back to the hills for just a second. <laughs> is, is there any, I hate to use the term publicly loophole, but is there anything that we can do as staff? Is there, are there any mechanisms out there where we don't have to put the ZBOA together in a formal meeting? Can we give more power to the you know, to TRC, to your department, JD? I mean, is there, have we looked into that? We, some of these that are being heard right now yeah. publicly could be done in a different way. Trini has spent a chunk of time with some help um, to go back through basically the last 10 years of variances to see what are we seeing the most, what are we seeing the second most, etc. And there is an option to expand the authority that staff has um, on some of those variances, maybe cut down the number. But, sir, I, I, that is an option. But I don't know of a loophole where I don't know of a loophole where we can make the advertising deadline in the paper that speeds this up. I mean, we, we <clears throat> our options are limited about how quickly we can take an application, do our job, and get it to them, and expect them to reasonably turn it around and put it in the in the paper. So that is definitely an option, but I think we're still going to have to contend. Yeah, because it doesn't the clock doesn't start when you send it to them. It starts when they publish it. That's right. That's right. I agree, but you know, as a community that's really trying to focus on you know, development friendly, business friendly, yeah. you know, this is just not helpful. Unfortunately, it's not our decision, but I, I was just asking if there's any way that you know, this form two is on the board of appeals. Yeah, one meets on the <laughs> second, you know, Monday, Tuesday. And sure. Monday. Sir, I mean, I, the. You know, candidly, the county attorney has not seen these drafts in their entirety yet. We've only taken one to him. We can try to get a heads up. And so I would welcome, I would welcome if you see something in the language that you feel like would give us another way to deal with this. But right now, um, the system is set up to where the notice, the notice that we do exceeds what they're required. There's a signage, there's letters, we can meet those deadlines, but you know, we have a relationship with the paper, and right now state law says you have to have to put in a legal organ. And so it can't be something that we send out digitally or post on our website. I mean it really, you know, that that partnership is 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 a speed bump. I think to your question, I'm sorry. No, while we're on that thing, I got one other question before you see that. 
I was just going to say we would probably look at that data that Trini has put together and look at expanding the regulatory on the front end for you all to consider because I wouldn't want us to get in a situation where staff was the one who was making a decision contrary to what you all had approved. So we're, we're going to take a look at what Trini has pulled based on what people asked for most to see if there's something that we need to propose and update again on the front end for you all to consider that would decrease the number of appeals that are going. That, that, that definitely would be the, the route to go is to look at what all those options are but certainly it needs to come through the commission to make those decisions because put staff, even though it kind of simplifies things and would actually speed the process up, that becomes a real slippery slope for staff to start making those type decisions on variances. So the sooner that those things can come through the commission uh, and, and not have to go to ZDOA, I think would be, that's the route we need to be looking at. Hey, Commissioner, I'm, I'm willing to discuss those options. It's just right now, given the timetable we're on, we, we, haven't, we haven't found one that we felt like was solid enough to recommend come to the country. But I'm welcome to other opinions if there's a language that we or something we can do to help make it better. Just, if I might, just an estimate, Trini, on you looking at those different variance cases. The percent, you look to see what the percentage of those cases are that you might be able to handle. I don't have a hard number. I kind of have a what consistently showed up. And just right off the bat, there are a couple that I think that this board, you know, would, would benefit from being a little more involved in. One is road frontage. That comes up a lot. And the other one is the connection to county utilities. <coughs> so those are pretty, uh, those and setbacks are the three major ones. Okay. Uh, I think that that's the route we need to be looking at sure. to help this situation. But y'all already have some of the setbacks, right? We do. 20% in Australia. We do. So, yes, sir. Uh, the other question I have, and I'll stand down, is the, um, the development. Where does that fall in the phase? And specifically, the number of lots that we're going to require. How do you want to say it? Yes, sir. That is. Points of address. Yes, sir. That is. We did not include it on this list. And so, right now, if you ask me, you know, Jason, what do you? What's the second round look like? You know, what do you start working on after the commission considers this? We have the number of lots for a cul-de-sac. We have signage. Plan developments. Um, those are those are the top three. Those are top three. I think the they're next all, round is going to require yeah, a lot right. more discussion than the first yeah. round has so far. So those 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 three alone <laughs> are, are heavy hitters that we we feel like you know when this settles down, those are the ones that we we'll pick back up. That we're going to pick back up. Those are the top of the list right now, sir. So currently we're standing with the, with the rule of the ordinance about the twenty-four. We are. Yes, sir. We we have you know. We have considered that. Um, right now, sir, we just, there's not a lot of information about why that was changed and what information led them to pick the new number of 150 on that goal stack. And we're less concerned about multifamily and multi story as we are about um, smaller, single story, townhome kind of development. We don't seem to have parking issues with multi-story, multi-family. It's the kind of smaller lot, smaller subdivision type PDs where this really seems to have the greatest impact for us. And it's a public safety issue. We have a couple of those. I won't mention exactly where right now, but in the afternoon, people get home. There's not room to get everything in the garage or even in the driveway, and they're parked on both sides of the street. So if we were to need to get a fire truck down that street, there's, there's no way. You, you can barely get a one way of traffic through there whenever those those cars because the lots are so small there's not room to stagger like you can see in some subdivisions. So we we've got a, a huge issue from public safety standpoint. Or do fire trucks with heavy duty bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> but Jean, she's just gonna do Connor through there and she's gonna suck up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell those firefighters when you drive those trucks to so get them running so <laughs> Um, in addition to the, the planning commission, um, the amendments have also been shared with the Home Builders Association. As our largest group of stakeholders, we'd like for them to be able to give us some feedback as well. Oh, that, it's not my Jason, I'll make it, but yes, sir. 
I've had several comments from other stakeholders about the process, about when we started with G Line 1. Is there any way that we can look at some form of notification, whether we put it in the newspaper or whatever we sure. might do, just to kind of broadly put it out there to you know, get a broader audience because sure. there's a lot of subcontractors and folks that aren't associated with the Home Builders Association, general contractors and stuff like that. They, Yes, sir. Do you mean on the events or do you mean on inspections? I'm sorry, on inspections. Yeah. Okay. We kind of got sidetracked. Yes, sir. Was well, part of the same email on Friday? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Jason. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for the JD and everybody. Yeah. Y'all are doing a lot of heavy lifting right now. We appreciate it.